There's a blanket here that needs to be folded up. Okay, what do I, where do I put this blanket? Uh, fold it up and... Hello. I'm going to be pretty quick overview of Canvas. However, I'm going to give you a resource from what we'll, that we created back in the spring semester with 60 plus videos that will go through uh, individual pieces of Canvas and uh, that you can dig into. So in case you have not uh, logged into Canvas yet, um, just you can go through Campus Nexus I don't know a lot of questions or answers on Campus Nexus, so I just go to the regular Lipscomb site. You can see I have Canvas right here on my browser, but lipscomb.instructure.com, and it's I N and then structure. And if I can get into find the chat here, um, um, this this is kind of the the secret way y'all get the free gift we purchased today for attending of finding out this way. Um, and this is how I log in and, and I don't go through Campus Nexus. I just go ahead and, and log in this way. Um, I recommend that once you log in, like that you do log out like at least once a week, um, I could stay in, in Canvas for a while. Um, also, if you log in and your classes are not there um, or you have trouble logging in, then you will need to contact um, IT and uh, because they help with like technical issues and they also do all of the um, support like through with the registrar's office of getting people in and students in and that's helpdesk at lipscomb.edu so um, that's something that we cannot help with we can help you once you get in there and talk about setting up your courses but the technical stuff, a lot of that has to go through IT. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in and you just log in with your Lipscomb username and password. Whoops, okay. So when you log in, you will see a dashboard. And I'm gonna go over a few features of the dashboard um, for you all today. I'm gonna to find my notes to make sure that I don't forget any of these pieces of it. And I tell people all the time, like start, small you don't have to do all the things that you want to do in canvas at first um, and like some of my classes i have home pages now i didn't have these fancy home pages like that had all these extra graphics on it and welcome students in um, i you know just had like a, a syllabus page and a, a modules pages um, because i had transitioned roles and literally had a class given to me three days before classes started so um, first thing uh, to know is your account information. Um, and this is where you can go in and log out if you need to. Um, I will start with a profile first. And this is where you can go in and add your lovely picture. I highly recommend it, especially with us having remote students this fall and some who are not coming to campus on purpose. Go ahead, uh, put a nice smiling picture of your face, your dog, I don't know, just something on there so they can recognize you. You can also go in and click, I always call the three dots the snowman. Um, and you can go in and edit the profile and you can put in your biography. You can also link to like social media um, information as well. Um, and then let's say that you are in a specific department or you have something like on campus or some professional organization that you're a large part of, you can add some additional links down there as well. I mean, I don't have any. Um, the students don't understand CTL, so I don't link that in there. Um, the files, I wouldn't really worry about at this point. Settings is a lot of the master settings. Um, in, I mean, when you click on it, it's just the, you know, you can see um, like what they'll, they'll see you and, and call you know, what the system has you called. Um, the other thing is notifications. Now, this is really important, notifications. And this is where you, you can set it up to receive the types of notifications you wanna receive with the interactions in Canvas. Um, there are some things like, I'm like, I don't need um, that as an email, but things like if, if a student makes a 
particular comment on a submission, then I want you to send me that right away. So I have it marked as notify me right away. Um, same thing with if there's something with late grading, but I still allow them to submit it, then I want to know kind of, oh, okay, there's something I need to go back in and take a look at that. Um, discussion boards and discussion posts, I just have them send me a daily summary so I can kind of see every day if, if someone has interacted with the discussion board. Um, conversations, this actually ties into the Lipscomb inbox over here on the left side. Um, I want to be notified right away. Um, and I also um, have, and you can see, you, if you hover over it, it will tell you what that is. Um, I also want emails of conversations created by me. Um, I'm a former uh, education teacher, K through 12. So I'm all about documentation. And this is documentation for me of, you know, a student, oh, I never even heard from that professor all, you know, if there's a grade appeal thing. Actually, you have, and let me go pull out all of my uh, conversations and things I've sent you, and I, I can just pull it from there. Now, that doesn't happen that often, but in my mind, if it ever did, I'm covered there. Um, I don't use the scheduling through Canvas, so I don't have any of these marked. Um, you can set it up, um, and we can talk about that at another time if you want. I use my Google Calendar for that. Um, and then um, I also receive uh, global announcements, and these are announcements that the institution sends out. They will put it on your dashboard, and whenever you log in, it'll be like right up here, like covering everything at the very top. Um, but I also ask for it to send me the email because some people like they just totally ignore that because once it comes up, you can hit the X and be done with it. And it will be things like, oh, turn it in as having maintenance from like 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. and we'll be down. So it gives you a little heads up of some things that are going on. I think there's one right now about uh, courses not being cross-listed yet because that's something that the registrar's office has to manually like un unenroll every student from one class and then put them in another. And so they're working on that piece. Also on the dashboard, um, you, you'll, these are kind of your course cards. And I love, this is a new feature where published courses are at the top and unpublished courses are at the bottom. If it's unpublished, that means students cannot see it at all. However, if I click on the little publish, right here, okay, now students can actually get in there and they can start seeing some content and you see that it has now appeared up here at the top um, by hitting the publish. This button is relatively new since the spring semester. Uh, there's another way to publish inside the course that I will show you as well. Now, so you've got um, a few things with the dashboard. That's really cool. This is the card view. I can do a list view that kind of tells me, um, okay, I don't have any to do's right now, but if I had any to do's, I could look at it that way. Um, or I could also look at it at recent activity that is happening as well. Um, I just like the card view. I think it's nice to kind of see my classes. I think it's also cool because I can go ahead and I could move these around. So like if this class was my uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at nine, I could put that one here. This one's my Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 10. This is a Tuesday, third. so I can reorganize it however I would like. And then I can also do, if you have colors and it's like, you're like, it's kind of like shaded. There's this color overlay. And if you click on it, you can see it kind of does a color, but because I put images on my courses, which I'll show you today how to do that, I don't have that in my particular course. You can also see, um, you can at, uh, see the entire list of courses. Um, so you'll see all of these that show up here are on my dashboard. But if I wanna see all courses, I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna see, okay, here, and I apologize, I have a lot because I download a lot of training materials, so I have a lot. Um, but then if, if it's a previous class, let's say that you have taught it previous semesters, it's gonna be down here like way down here. Um, so like here is my spring 2020 course. Now I can't click on my star and the star lets, if it's a, there's a star, that means it's on my dashboard right there. But past enrollments, I can't click on the star and I can't add it to my dashboard, but I can actually click on it and go into it and get that previous content if I want to. Um, the, if 
one of the things I tell people, if you log in and you see that you have a course missing, the very first thing I do is I always go to courses and then I go to all courses to see if it may have not been marked yet and that the, I need to add the star. If I don't see it at all, that's when I'll submit a help desk ticket at helpdesk at lipscomb.edu. And then these are my future enrollment. These are the ones that will be starting August, um, August for these two. And then these, this is a um, term two class for me that I have that's gonna be coming up. Um, also on the dashboard, um, over here, I love this part of the dashboard. It will let you know, okay, these are assignments that you have coming up. Um, I, I created, I did a Canvas 101 the other day, so I created a few assignments. Um, if there's anything that you need to do, like grading of students' work, they've submitted work, it would show up over here under the to-do, which I love that. Um, you can also download like the Canvas teacher app and apparently I've not used it because I'm on my laptop so much, but it apparently has a really good interface that you can use for grading purposes as well. Um, then um, you, you won't have the admin um, on your panel um, over here, calendar. This calendar is a great um, tool once it comes up and feature, maybe, there we go. It's like it's Friday afternoon. I don't want to uh, show you anything today, but what you can do is this populates. So if I had all of my courses, you know, up, you can see it's different colors. Now, all of these are a lot of the training demos we've done in Zoom and Panopto. Um, let's just say that this particular assignment that I have, that I have um, I'm not going to make it due on the 12th. I'm going to give the students an ex some extra time. I can literally drag and drop it on the calendar and it will automatically update the assignment date within the actual assignment. Um, so I really like that feature of, as well of like, okay, I'm in class, I realize my students need a little bit extra time or maybe one more day to do something, then I can just literally drag and drop it. Okay, I'm gonna make that due on Sunday instead. Um, so that's a, a nice feature that you can have. Inbox uh, kind of functions as like uh, your Canvas email it does connect to our regular email and I really like it, like I said, for communication purposes. Now, I will tell you that students don't read the inboxes and I know this because um, I have one of those students who last year he logged into his Canvas and I saw there was a big number three um, and I'm like, you've got some messages from your teachers, like why aren't you answering? And he's like, oh, I didn't see those. Well, it may be because he doesn't have his notifications set up which is why I encourage you to have your students go ahead and set up their notifications. So in here, I can go over here and select, and I can select and be able to select a course. Let's see if this is gonna work. We had some student, aha, yes, this one works. Um, and I can select specific students that I want to send an, an email to. Um, this is a faculty course that I, um, task some faculty to be my students in this course. So I'm gonna um, send Emily a message and let's say that I'm going to send, let's do Misty a message. And I'm gonna say, please turn in your work. Lockers, no, just kidding. I'm not gonna do that. Um, and I'm gonna say just uh, demonstrating how to do this in Canvas. And if you all ever want to be willing to be my guinea pigs um, for classes too, just let me know. Um, what I really like this is that I can send this to e an individual message to each student. Um, so this, you know, if I write a message to like six students who haven't completed something, I can just say, hey, you know, just reaching out um, to make sure everything's okay because you haven't submitted this assignment. Um, but it looks like I'm in emailing each one individually and they're like wow they really took the time to do all of that no i just used not my nice little check mark there in canvas and so then i can send a message um, and you can um if you want to see like if somebody asked me this um this summer and they're like what about any messages i've sent you can always go right to the sent and you can see the messages that you have sent um, to other people as well uh, which is great um, and 
when you when I send this message, I will now get an email in my Canva or my Gmail letting me know that I have sent this message to students. Um, so that way I have it once again for documentation. Commons is um, a place where it's a repository for anyone who is a Canvas user from all over um, who uh, teach classes. If they want to put their content free for other people to download, you can go in there. So let's look at uh, communication. Oh, we've got some, you know, different types of communication here. There's like an intro to, let's see, let's do like just communication 101. And I can see it could be an entire course. It might be a module. It might be a quiz as an example. So that's a great place that I go to pull like training materials and stuff all the time, just to look to see what other people are putting out there. Studio is where this is one of the options we have. We have various options in, in Canvas where we have Studio and we have Panopto where you can do screencasting and record videos. Um, that's up to you on what you would like to do. You can also use Zoom and bring that in as well. I mean, there are lots of screencasting tools. You can see I love Canvas Studio. But like if I go to load more, I do a lot of videos. <laughs> And you load more. Um, I like it because it's very simple and easy to use. Literally, I'll hit the record button. It'll ask me, am I doing a screen capture? And it will like put little lines around what I want it to see, or do I want to do a webcam capture, which is like these here. So these are my weekly announcements I do. I do a video announcement every week, which may be something good for this fall semester with having students who may be moving. Um, and just kind of give them an overview of what to expect for the week. Um, you can also add in um, YouTube videos as well. So you can see I've added in somewhere. Uh, da, da, da. This one, Daniel Pink's Drive video, I added it in there. Um, and just a few other features that that's really good. You can click on the snow. All, the snowman always gives you more options. You can click on the snowman and you can create little quizzes in there. They're like multiple choice. They're not, they're just uh, starting that feature. So there's not a lot of options at this time. But if you want to embed like some videos and then have some questions for students, I think that's a great way for some people who like to flip their classrooms and have recorded con pre recorded content. Uh, the other thing that is really, really helpful. Let's do this one here. I can I can actually click on this video and I can go to captioning and I can go in maybe oh I gotta move I've got to move all of you all around on my zoom for a minute oh, it's not gonna there we go there we go and I can select oh now I gotta move my zoom bar <laughs> okay I can go which language I need you to caption in English um, and so um, I can hit request and it will queue it up and then it will send me an email. Now it's about 85% accurate, which is pretty good with the captioning services. You can also, um, there we have uh, some teachers who um, teach um, foreign languages. They can also you know, do a lot of different ones, which is kind of cool. Um, help on the dashboard. Um, this is one that you probably, they, they have a few like Canvas tools here. Um, however, the only thing that you might go to is kind of the service cloud or, or reporting a problem. And that actually creates a ticket that either myself or two of the folks from IT, we're all kind of the admins on that piece. Um, and that's fine to do that. However, it's really recommended to do the help desk at Lipscomb because that gets to, through the Lipscomb system and not the Canvas question or the Canvas system. And they can help monitor like the, the things. And IT and I, we work really well together. Um, if it's something that they're like, okay, that's something that is really more in hopes realm, then they'll tag me in that um, question. Or if it's something that's in their area, I'll say, hey, this is a technical problem. Um, because we have a Canvas kind of a help support person that will um, that we can escalate things to. So this is kind of just the overall dashboard. Now, 
let's get into actually building out your course and what that may look like. So I'm gonna start with my course here, my Canvas 101 training. Yay, okay, I need to, I thought I had deleted everything. I have not, let me quickly delete. <laughs> See, see how easy it is to delete stuff. What's great about Canvas is it is so easy to play around with and just try some things. Now, I will tell everyone if you log on and you don't have a sandbox, you can submit a help desk ticket um, or email the help desk and ask them if they will create a sandbox for you for Canvas. I highly recommend it just to, the, to play with the content and then import that content into your course. Um, for the, the first time that you are actually going in there. Okay, I gotta move your, you all around again. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna go into my course now that I have deleted a few other things. Okay, and um, I'm going to, when I first start, let me pull up a course, actually. Sorry, you all don't have this um, Canvas 101 2. Um, admins can, I can do these little sandbox courses like this, but we have you all do help this so that way it's on Lipscomb's record. Okay, when you log into your course, this is exactly what you're going to see. This is what, if you hit the publish button, this is what students will see at first. So um, you can start right here with kind of creating a module um, and, you know, and build out that way. You can also look at some other things that you are able to go in and change as well. I'm going to start, and this is the very first thing that I always start with when I see this. I always scroll down. This is kind of my navigation bar in my um, course. I always scroll down to the word settings and I can get this, oh, here is where I choose an image that I want to add. You can create your own I use canva.com. I love canva.com. It's completely free and I create graphics um, and I'm able to upload them in here. I'm going to choose an image. Now, let's just say that I don't have an image that I've created, but I could go over here to Unsplash, which is a free Creative Commons. And let's just look up the word um, bison. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay. So I could choose one of these and that's going to show up as um, my particular uh, course card image. But I, for this one, I have actually, I have an image. You can either double click to upload or you can drag and drop. And oh, I'm, I'm trying to move my Chrome over so I could drag and oh, I'm just going to upload. Uh, I have things all over the place right now um, on my desktop. so like my brain. Okay, here we go. Canvas 101 training course card. I have now uploaded it. There it is. Nice and easy. That's what's, that's what you will see when we go back. I can also, the other thing, start and end. Um, this is automatically populated based on the registrar's office and the terms. So most likely it'll say August the 24th, and then it will be about three weeks after the, 20, uh, the end of the semester because that gives students a chance if they have any incompletes to get that in if you've given any incompletes. You can change this um, and we are recommending for some folks go ahead and change that date now because you'll be able to go in and um, students can see it. If you publish it, they can see it. The only caveat is they are not allowed to submit anything. Uh, that messes up with financial aid implications. We are not allowed to ask students to submit things before the actual first day of classes. So you can just go in and, and, and change that day if you want. Um, some people also like, oh, they can only participate, like especially like um, maybe some of the um, classes that have accreditation stuff and you're like, I don't want you to go back in here. For some reason you can restrict as well. Um, the other thing down here that I would go to more options is making sure that if you do discussions that they can attach files and that they can create discussion posts that, that they can edit as well. I also um, hide grade distribution graphs from students. 
what this does is when you are, if you grade in Canvas, it will tell you like what the high and the low was for each one and what the average for the whole group. Um, and I, I personally don't want that. I don't want students to see that, especially if they may have been the lowest of the low in the class. I just prevent that. Um, and so I choose to do that. Um, and then I'm going to update course details. You always need to scroll all the way down to be able to see. Now, if I go back to dashboard, this is my Canvas 101-2 now, since I just created this other one. There we go. Right here we are. Yay, we've got my image in there. Excellent. Some additional things with settings that I always go into. You notice this navigation has a lot of stuff on there. I'm not going to use everything that's on the side. So I can go over here to navigation and I can drag down. Okay. Um, let's say I want, okay. I'm not, let's say that you're not using chat. I can drag that down. Um, I'm not using Flipgrid. I'm not using new analytics. I don't need students to see Google Drive or attendance um, or collaborations. I'm just choosing some things, conferences. So think about the things that you might use. Um, one of the things I do recommend for all faculty to kind of take down is the files. That does not mean that you can't upload files. You can, that just means students can't see it. Um, only you can see it. And I do this because sometimes I'll upload files that they need later on in the semester that I don't want them to see yet, but they could possibly see it if it's in that files section. Outcomes, um, this is for more of like the competency-based programs. I know nursing, some of them use that, but I'm not going to use it for this class, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, and I love it because I can change. So like Zoom is going to be really important this fall for students to be able to access their course. So I'm going to move it up near the top, right before grades. Um, also Panopto video in case they need to view some recordings, that's going to go right there underneath. And then the rest, um, I'm going to use pages, but I don't need to see that. Oh, syllabus, I'm going to put that near the top, right under announcements there. Modules is going to be my basis. Mm, I'm just going to drag that right here. Okay, let's just start there and see how this goes. I'm going to click save. Okay, and you can see that on the side here, um, the, the things that have the little uh, eye with the little line through it, that means students can't see it now. But Hope, you left that above. Yes, that means that there's not any content in there yet. I have not put any content into those sections, so no one's going to see that. Now, um, the other thing that you might consider, apps don't need to worry about feature options. Um, some people like to use the new quizzes feature. Uh, Canvas does a really good job of beta testing some things before actually launching it and letting uh, uh, people in there and actually trying out some things and getting feedback, which is really good. Um, instead of just like, oh, here's a new feature and boom, you know, now we all have to change. Um, so you could click the new quizzes, which there's like there are a few more quiz um, questions or choice of, of types of questions you can ask in there with quizzes with the new quizzes this is where you also in settings would go in to import course content or export co course content so if you imported course content let's just say that my friend who taught this class last semester already taught it and gave me their course you know in a file then I could go in and I can copy a Canvas course, let's say if I was on that course. So if I was going to bring in from a, a previous class, then I would do the copy a Canvas course and I would search for that course and then select all content. But if my friend gave me a, the Canvas file, then I would, you know, do the Canvas course export package and I would um, add that file in. And so you're able to go in and use that settings to import. So this is really good for those who may be new this semester. It's your first semester. You're building stuff, but let's say next semester you want to use a lot of the same content. You can go right here to settings and then click import course content. This is your another free gift we purchased today. Um, validate links and content. Now this course I'm building out, so I don't have any links, but if I'm reusing course content, 
I can go here, run this, and it will let me know if there are any broken URL links, you know, because nothing ever changes on the internet. All of my links are always going to work, right? No. Um, but it's really helpful. Um, so like I'm teaching a class in October that I taught um, in March, no, in January. So I'll probably, there's, it's a completely online class. So there's not a lot of content that needs to be changed. So I will probably import it and then I'll go through and validate the links to see if there are any broken links in there. Okay, so once I get into my settings, this is when I work on uh, building out my course. Um, I use my syllabus tool, I go there, and it's really nice and easy, you can hit edit, and you can actually go in here, and you can, um, let's say I wanna upload a, my actual syllabus uh, for students, I'm like, um, please read the syllabus before the first day of class. And you can go in here to files and I'm going to go upload new file. I'm just going to choose a random file on my um, desktop right now. Here we go. Uh, let's see. That's a, there we go. Okay. We're going to pretend that's, that this is now going to, oh, I got to hit upload. That'd be good and helpful. And there's my uh, syllabus for the semester. So students can, do. some people actually copy and paste from their actual syllabus in there. Um, I have also seen some people, they go right here and they click the little studio button and they do the webcam and they're like, hi, you know, I'm so-and-so, I'm going to be your instructor this semester. I'm looking forward to getting to know you. So they can record a little video in there as well. Um, so whatever you would like um, for that, you can. Um, and so there, there's a place for you to put the, the syllabus in the course. The other thing that, and I, one of the things I, I caution people for, uh, to do is if you are uploading files that students are not like uh, your syllabus or something like that, I highly recommend that you upload PDFs and not documents. So that way they don't go in and make any changes to any of that stuff. You can also link to like Google Drive, but just make sure it's view only where they're not going in and editing any of that. So that's just a little um, tip for you as well. This course summary is something that automatically gets populated when you build assignments and we'll come back to this. And if I forget to come back, somebody be my reminder there for that. Okay, so I've now uploaded my syllabus. Yay, okay, there's first start. And if, you know, if that's where you're starting at for this fall, start there. The next thing is I need to put some modules, okay? Modules are super easy. I think of modules kind of like folder, like file folders. Um, and if I had a, a, a module for every week, that's kind of my file folder with my content for the course. So all I have to do is just really go over here to the plus module, or you can hit this. Uh, I just come here and I'm gonna say uh, week one, August 24 through 31, and I'm gonna add a module there. Um, I go ahead typically and I um, um, I just go ahead and build out my modules. Um, this right here, right now, um, if my course was published, students would be able to see that there's a module there. But I can go ahead and build in modules for the whole semester and not publish them yet um, if I'm releasing content um, a little bit at a time. And so, like I said, so now I have my file folders. Okay, I've got to put some stuff in there. Okay, what are some things that students need to do? Well, um, an idea that I just got from a faculty member this week um, was to create kind of a checklist. Things are gonna be a little iffy on like, you know, remote in person. So I'm gonna hit a, the plus button. And when you hit the plus, this is where you now add the content. And you can see there are lots of things you can do. You can add assignments, quizzes, files, pages, discussions, text headers. I'll show you those in just a second. External URL. So if you have like a YouTube video or a link to a website or and then external tool will take you to some external tools when you drop down. Um, so you can choose what you want to go in there. So I'm gonna start with a page and I'm gonna click on new page and I'm gonna name my page here. And I'm gonna say um, 
week one checklist and I'm going to, I always like to put start here to let students know where in the module they're going to start for the week. Um, this is a tip that I've gotten from teaching online of like, what, what are, what am I going to do for a little bit? So I just created a page. Now, if I click on my page, I don't have anything in there. So I need to add something so I can go in and edit and say, welcome to week one. Um, this week we will be talking about, and I can do some bullet points of objective one, objective two. Um, here's what you will need to complete this week. And let's say we'll do um, an intro discussion board. Um, you need to uh, read the article on the link provided. And then they're going to do a reflection on the reading. Okay, that's great. Isn't this a great first week that we're going to have now? I'm going to hit save and publish. And, and there's there's my page and, and you can fancy it up. You can add in like if you wanted to add in like this little studio here. Um, you can go in and add in um, some specific things there um, in a little video like, hey, welcome. You can do that video there or you can do it in your weekly announcements. Um, just kind of a, hey, here's here's, you know, myself as the instructor. Now, if I go back to my modules page. I saved and published that particular page. It's thinking, okay, you will see there's a green check mark there. Um, I'm not sure about check boxes or not um, on the bullet list. I would have to look into that, Denise. Um, you see, this is green. This is not green, okay? I can go ahead and make these green and this not green and students are not gonna see it. Students cannot see anything in a module until I hit it green and now they can see it. So green is good. This is a big thing with a lot of people of like, well, I put my stuff in Canvas. I don't know why they can't see it. And I just go in on the admin view and look into that class and I'm like, oh, everything down here is green, but you didn't publish the actual module. Um, so this is a good little thing. If you hide files, and then you just go ahead and you can preload some things you um, are able to go in there and add it now. Okay, so I, I just created a page. Now I'm going to create that discussion board that I talked about. So I'm going to do a new topic and I'm going to do introduction. Okay, you see, I haven't done anything with it. And notice you'll see each one of these has a different icon here. Okay, I need to go into edit. And here's my favorite introduction. There we go. We're going to introduce ourselves with the instructions of what they need to do. Um, you can allow threaded replies, but here's my favorite. Users must post before seeing replies from others. So they have to do their original thoughts before they can see what other people um, say. And I want to, I want this to be graded. I want this to be worth something. Okay. Um, you can also allow liking where they can like each other's um, if you want to as well. Um, you can do group discussions like um, I have had like uh, some groups I've worked with where there's been like 100 people and I broke them down into smaller groups um, where they only responded to each other. So let's just say that this discussion board is worth 50 points. Okay. Um, keep it in the assignments. This is where it will automatically populate it first and we'll go into that. Um, I'm not requiring peer reviews on a discussion board. That's mainly for some writing if I want to do some peer reviews. I'm going to assign it to everyone and I'm going to say that this is due Sunday um, by midnight and you see that it will automatically, if you want to change that, you can go in and, and change that. Some people also decide I only want this to be available from this date to this date. So it will only show up where they can. So like, I'm not accepting anything late, then you would have, you know, where it, where it will um, cut it off. A lot of people use this for quizzes and tests that they also like, it's only open from this time to this time. Okay. 
here we go. I'm going to go in and this time I'm just going to click save so you can kind of see that. So I'll go back to modules, my fancy discussion board that they're going to do. I go in. Oh, I haven't made it green. So because I didn't publish it. So I'm just going to need to make it green. Okay. Oh, I also told my students that they needed to read that article that I sent them and that I have a link for that. You know, if I wanted to upload a file, if I had a file of that, I could. But let's say I'm taking them to a website that they needed to read. They need to read this really good article right here about Lipscomb, okay? And I can name it Lipscomb Facts. Okay, here we go. I can also choose for it to load in a new tab for them. So that way it'll keep Canvas in one tab and it'll just take them over there to read. Or you can have it where it's embedded within. All right, I'm gonna add it. There we go. There's, there, there's now when I go this and click on it, okay. I can click right here and click on the, the website. I know, I know, it's giving me my warning here. Um, so you can do lots of things here. Um, Canvas is gonna be really important for like, typically in the past when I've done handouts, I've brought them all to class, I've handed them out. Well, I'm gonna have half of my class who are gonna be on Zoom, half of my class are gonna be in person. So I'm gonna to have to preload Canvas with a lot of my files um, or the links that I want them to access before class starts. Okay, I also needed them, um, they had an assignment due, right? They had a reflection. All right, new assignment. I'm gonna do uh, week one reflection on the reading. Okay, excellent. So now they've got to do I'm trying to move this little bar here. Okay. They need to do this reflection for the class for the week. Come on. I need to go into edit. And I'm going to put in here's what you need to do for your assignment for the week. Okay. This is going to be worth um, 100 points. I'm going to keep it in assignments for now. I want it to be shown as points. Sometimes I have things where it's just complete or incomplete. Like I give them a handout, like they have to get, you know, signed off on or something like that. And it doesn't really count for anything. Um, it's something that you may assign letter grades to, or it's something that may not be graded. Um, and let's just say that let's pretend this one was the complete com incomplete. I could click select, do not count this. And it won't go into the grade book because the assignments that you put in here that's what builds the gradebook when we get to gradebook in just a minute. That's a little bit backwards from Blackboard when we had Blackboard. So I'm just going to put that I want to be seen as points. Um, and yes, oh yeah, I'll, I'll get to student view. I haven't gotten to that yet, Erin. Good question. Um, and this one, okay, pretty much everything this semester is going to have to be submitted online if there is a submission. Um, Plus, I, I, I'm going to be trying to, I've tried to be very cautious and safe and I'm not wanting to touch papers by students. I don't want them to print it out and bring anything in. They just can upload it all into Canvas. Now, um, you, if you have them, like some assignments, um, I teach a lot of ed tech classes for College of Ed. So sometimes they create websites or different things. So I might have that they have a website URL or they have a Google document that they are sharing. It might be media recordings where they're uploading video um, or it could be a file upload. Um, so we're just going to pretend on all of these. I do like to restrict the file types and I only allow doc, docx, and PDF. Pages is great. I have a, a MacBook. I can see pages, but it's really complicated to go in there. With this, it will limit what they can actually um, and I actually had a student who told me that I was limiting his creativity by limiting um, to a document or a PDF. I said, like, well, you can make it and whatever, and then just change it to a PDF. That's all you need to do. But um, he got over it that quickly. Um, and then I, you can, the amount of temps to upload. Um, sometimes I, you know, they upload like the wrong thing. They're like, oh, I need to go back in. So, so sometimes I just leave it as unlimited or you can say, okay, you get like two attempts to get it uploaded. Like if not, we, we've got a, a problem there. Um, and we need to chat about paying attention to what you upload. Um, plagiarism. 
Um, if it's something that you want to kind of review for plagiarism, we have a great tool called Turnitin. Um, and I just kind of, you know, if it's a lot of like reflection type stuff, I typically don't do Turnitin, but if it's like a, an APA formatted class and they have to use APA formatting, then I will have them do this. I'm a former English teacher and I'm always trying to help with their, especially my grad students I teach to become better writers. And I usually just leave whatever's on there and it will show the students the report um, and it will give you a report as well. You can also make group assignments if you would like. You don't have to. I'm not going to do peer reviews at this point. I'm just doing a basic assignment. This assignment, I'm going to make it due next Tuesday night by midnight. And I'm going to hit save and publish. Da da da. Oh, excellent. Let me go back to my module now. And there we go. We've got green is good for everything here. Okay, so my students will be able, once I publish the course, be able to see this information. Now, how do I know what students can see? Okay, if I go back to the home page in the course, there's this great thing right over here called student view. I love this and you will see it comes up with this pink bar at the bottom and it lets me see what students are able to see. Um, and you see this is still my home page for now. We can change that and I'll show you how you can do that. Um, so we've got that. Oh, here's the syllabus. And you see now the course summary, I've created two assignments. The course summary, this is like populating your course schedule that you're gonna have for the, and this is populated automatically by Canvas. And I tell students all the time, I'm like, hey, if, if you, you know, even though it says to do all over the place for on the student view for Canvas of what to do, go, you know, always click on syllabus and you can go look at that course summary um modules like i said oh yay students can see that now assignments and you see like discussions here and this was the discussion i created you can create discussions in discussions or you can do it in you know create assignments in assignments but since i like to put them within my module i actually like creating them from modules instead of one of these other places um so because if i created let's say that i created one here well, let me get out of student view. If I created a new assignment here, I'm gonna make this do Wednesday, and since we were 25 points, whatever. Okay, let's just say I have that new assignment there. Now it's not in a module, but I can go back to module. If I click on this now, I can go over here and it will show you the ones you've already created and you can add it in that way. But like I said, I like to build from within modules because it helps me think of organizing my folder for that week. Now back to student view, I wanna show you like what Aaron said, what it looks like for students to actually submit assignments, okay? So this student needs to do this week one reflection. And remember, I let them, they can upload um, a URL, a video recording, or um, some type of document, okay? And it tells them, okay, you're allowed to. All students will do is they go to this nice button right here, hit submit assignments, and they can choose a file. Here's where they can copy and paste the URL. If they want to record or upload media right there, if they're doing some type of um, video, or they can uh, drag and drop as well. They can submit something from Google Drive, or I love this Canvas Studio where they can go in and record using Canvas Studio if it's a, a video but they would just go in here. I'm gonna show this to you. Um, oh, look, I can't do a PNG. Man, this is Dr. Nordstrom. Man, she's tough. Okay, here we go. I've uploaded, I agree, submit assignment. Um, I like to use, this is my test student, which by the way, my test student receives 100 every single semester. Like I have the perfect test student. And I let, I use the test student to let me double check things um, as well. So you can submit assignments through there. So now on my assignments page, you can see that they are like this here and it populates assignments all the way. Well, let, if you're doing like a point system, just keep it as assignments and you can just add up the points, which is really easy. Now, if you're doing something like grouping where you have like, okay, I'm gonna click on the snowman. Here's our snowman. I'm going to do, oh, I need to actually first before the snowman, I need to do a new group. 
So let's just say that um, quizzes is a group. It's going to create a new group. Let's do uh, exams. And I'm going to change this with my snowman. I'm going to edit this and I'm going to call this homework. And this, uh, when you click on that, the snowman, you can see where you can drop like some scores too. If, if there are so many, like you, you, I'll drop like the three lowest or for people who give a lot of quizzes, sometimes they'll drop some quizzes as well. Oh, I need to also give a group for um, participation and attendance or something like that. Okay, so I've got my different categories now. Now I'm gonna click on the snowman and I'm gonna select assignment groups weight and I'm gonna weight my final assessment based on these different groups. So um, homework is gonna count as 10%, participation is going to be, let's do 20%, quizzes are gonna be 20%, no, I'm gonna do a lot of quizzes, right? Um, and then final or uh, any exams are going to be 40%. So now when you see it will total up for part of the total. So those who use different weighting categories, I only have one class where I weight like this and that's my Lipscomb experience class. Most of my other classes, I just do a point system and um, have however many points that they're going to get to, to get their grade um, for the class. So now with this, with assignments, so I've got some assignments. Um, if you're wanting to know more about setting up quizzes and exams, I will link to videos that kind of walk through that. Um, um, and that's, that can also be a, a follow-up that we can do as well. But um, I want to go into grades, okay? Oh, oh, actually, before I go into grades, my test student submitted an assignment, yay. Now you can see there's a nice little to do that I need to go in and grade this particular student's assignment, which is great. Um, and I'll come back to this because this is like I said, this is how I go in to grade. Okay, now, oh no, wrong class. Here, here we go. All right, so now I wanna take a look at grades and grade book, okay? And when we've asked students like, what information do you want to know on Canvas? They wanna know the syllabus and what am I, and assignments and what am I have to do and what are my grades? You know, what am I making in there? So grade book um, is, is great because of course, this is a, a test. Um, actually, I'll go into my faculty one. Okay, and I'm gonna go into grades and see some of the ones that they've already done. Um, so this right here will not, this notes column will not be shown at first. And you can get to that by clicking on view and then selecting notes. I also, if you have unpublished assignments, they may show up. And so if you don't want them to be seen, you can click on that as well. Or if you do want them to be seen. So I love this little notes column. Students cannot see this notes column. Um, this is kind of like when I used to take notes and keep it in a separate document. Now I keep it in Canvas so it's in a one place thing or if I'm grading and I'm, I notice something, I can put some uh, different names. So um, if I have uh, students that go by a different name than what they're um, called by, you know, and they're like, I want you to call me Sunshine, you know, I can put that in there. Um, if, if I know that they're part of a sports team, then I will put um, that information out because they may be leaving um, class some or they get extensions and uh, excused absences because they're on the sport, but we'll see how that plays out this particular semester. Um, if, if they have an accommodation, so like Emily Medlock here, she gets extended time. This is just a nice reminder for me that um, like I, when I make a quiz or an exam, I need to give a longer time or an assignment, I, get, I can give her longer time. Let's say Debbie is gonna be a completely remote student this, this fall. This kind of lets me know, I need to keep checking in with her um, this particular fall. Um, let's just say that um, Misty, she just told me that her parents are um, getting a divorce. Um, this is a, a nice way because I like to check in on my students and keep 
Um, so this, this kind of gives me um, a little bit of information and I can put, like I said, all kinds of information here and students do not see this. And then um, the assignments build up. So you can see the students have, have submitted assignments here and then you can scroll over and see their total. Um, now this little thing right here with the A's and A's minus and all that, look at all of my awesome faculty students. They are doing a great job. If you see them, you can tell them they're doing a great job in my class. What's funny is Dwayne's wife was on the training earlier this week and uh, cause she teaches in uh, math. And she said, I'm really glad my husband's making an A in your class. So. Uh, but you can uh, see this total. You can also display it. So I, it's displayed by percentage. If I wanted to display by points, I could, and you can see that. Okay, Emily, um, she only has a 50, she has a 50, but it's showing her as an A, but I can go back in and I can give Emily a zero here because um, she hasn't submitted that assignment. Oh, now Emily's not doing so well in my class. Um, so, you know, I, I may need to reach out to her. Um, for some things. Um, you can also do some sorting. The other thing with grade and the grade book is this right here, where um, if you have late policies, you can automatically apply like a percentage off. Now be really, really careful with this. Do not check this and leave this at 100 because it will give them a 100 like for their missing assignments. Cause I, we had a faculty member and they're like, they have all these missing assignments, but they all are getting hundreds in there um, and they're all making A's and I know that's not the case. So be really, really careful. Here's, here's where the applying the deduction for late assignments, but here this automatically apply grade for missing assignment. Oh, you're missing assignment. Let's just give you a hundred. Woohoo, you know, when all students like that. So um, anyway, uh, just be really careful reading through these whenever you're this. And then um, I automatically post grades or you can manually post it where, um, depending on the assignments, because sometimes I choose where they don't see it until like it's like everyone goes through. So if I start an a, um, last name A grading, um, I can hide the assignments and I'll show you that when we get to Gradekeeper. Now, here's another little tool I like with communication with the grade book piece. That's another free gift we'll purchase today for coming. Um, if I click on the three dots, I can go down here to message students who haven't submitted yet. And I can go in and I can say, hey, just wanted to check in on this. Or students who scored more than, and I can select a specific number, let's say 80, and I can say, hey, great job on this particular um, assignment. I could tell that you put a lot of work and it will individually message all of the students who fit that category, which is a nice little quick, and they think I've spent all this time congratulating them on being well done. Or if they did poorly on an assignment, it may be that I go in and I say, um, hey, I noticed that you didn't do as well on this particular quiz. Uh, what can I help you with on this? Or, you know, um, what, how did you study for this? Um, give me a little bit of insight into that. So I can take a look at some of that as well. Students only see their grade. That is correct. Yes, they do not in the grades. They only see their grades, um, which this is why I, I created a faculty example. So I can show you all and not actually show you live students grades and, and stuff. So yes. Now, the snowman also let me see, okay, I could enter speed grader right here. And speed grader is the best thing when it comes to grading. And this is where I can go in and look at the assignments and I can and see this right here where it says the average. Um, this is where I hid a lot of that stuff from students so they don't see it, but I can see what the average is for that particular assignments, but students don't see it now because I hid it in that setting. But let's see, oh, M Misty right here, she hasn't submitted anything for this. So I can just go in and give her a zero if I needed to and put a comment like, you didn't do this, you know, you're not doing so well on that. But um, the other way that I get into speed grader is right here. Here's my test student in Canvas 101-2. Um, I can go in right here and I can grade the assignment. Oh, this is a great job. Okay. There's nothing there. Excellent. Um, I could have a, I haven't shown how to do rubrics in 
um, assignments for this particular training today because I know we're right at two. We can stay a little bit longer if you want on a couple of things um, and ask additional questions. Um, but there's a video talking about rubrics as well. So I just go in here, I can hit submit. My, I can put in comments, but here's my favorite I love to do. This down here, this media comment, I can go in here and I can. Hi, test student. Thanks so much for your submission. You are the best student ever. Excellent. And I can just go in there. I can title it uh, feedback. Click save. And it will pop up with my comments in there for the student. So I love doing this video feedback. You can also do like you attach. If you click on this, this, I'll hit record. This button will take what I say and turn it into the feedback that I would like to give to students. And then it puts it in the box for you. And then I can just capitalize it if I want. Boom. Yay. I am so efficient at grading. Look at that. Boom. And I can submit that as needed as well. Yes. So um, Zoom integrated into Canvas. Absolutely. I know some of you may have to go um, and how it's recorded. Yes, I wanted to get to that. Um, and I will send you this recording um, so you can rewatch anything. And like I said, the, the resources site I will share with you all as well has additional videos. So now let's go back to my courses. Um, so th that's a lot of the basics. The, the Canvas one all the little videos I have done will break it down into a few other things that you might consider adding to your class. But the important thing now with Canvas, okay, so two things, well, one thing before I get to Zoom, um, you will see that my course is currently unpublished. So I need to click publish and I have a green box there and you will see now on my dashboard my camp, there it is, it's up here in publish, which you can also hit publish here as well. I think they did this nice friendly reminder because that's the number one ticket that I answer in Canvas is that my students cannot see. Oh, look, I've got an inbox here. Yeah, see. <laughs> so she replied back from her Lipscomb email. Um, I'm sorry, Dr. Nordstrom, in a way I can get extra credit. So no, you can't, sorry. Uh, you should do your work first time, right? Okay, so Zoom and Canvas and the new integration. I love this so much, you all. Okay, so I, you can see, you know, when we went to navigation, I moved Zoom up a little bit. So I'm going to go to Zoom and I've, I'm going to create some videos this weekend on more of this to add to that website. We've just been in trainings all this week and haven't had a chance to do it. So I'm gonna do some this weekend. So I'm gonna put in my class, you know, meeting um, information. Uh, my class, okay, let's just say that this fall, um, uh, my class, it really meets at um, 2.45 to four, um, but I'm gonna start it at, at 2.30. I'm gonna go ahead and say two, two hours just to have it. Here's what I love for, the, for as we're setting up classes for this fall in Zoom hit recurring meeting, and this recurs every week, repeating every week, and I can mark, this class happens every Tuesday and Thursday, and I can click, it ends. I'm not gonna really do this today because it will populate a long list, but I can go all the way to the end of December when class is over uh, to be able to get all of them populated. I love this because it will automatically show up on the students' calendars as well. But so for our training purposes today, and today's the 14th, I'm going to say through next Friday. Okay, the other thing is passcode and waiting room. I'm going to choose not to do the waiting room because I'm going to tell all of my students to only go through Canvas. I'm not sharing my class info out on any links. Um, passcode, that's up to you if you want to. If students log in and they hit join through Canvas, and I'll show you what that looks like on the student side, they don't have to hit a passcode, but I will have to type in a passcode when I go into the Zoom room um, and, and on that touchpad that I know a lot of you all got trained on this week, but let's say for now I make my passcode that. Um, I'm going to mute participants upon entry and then the other thing I love 
record the meeting automatically in the cloud. Uh, this way, all of my recordings will automatically take place. I don't have to remember with trying to get everything situated to, re to record. So now when I click save, da -da -da, I'm going to refresh and zoom. And there are my two recurring meetings for this upcoming week, which is fabulous. I love this. Um, Casey, that's something I would check with IT because I know IT set up the HIPAA compliant Zoom. So um, check with them um, on that. Yeah. Okay. Now the other thing, Panopto video. Okay. And my recordings that I'm doing. Last year when we did Zoom and Panopto, everything we did in Zoom automatically came over to Panopto and it came into the My Meetings folder and you had to move them, not any longer. So now, and, and you know, let me show you quickly the student view of this. So when students come into my class and, and they, they are remote that week, they just go in, they click on Zoom and they just click the join button and they're good to go, which I'm like, fabulous. Now the recording piece is the awesome piece. I love this so much because I need to go into one of these courses that we have been doing all of our demos in. Um, so let's just say I've been using my Lipscomb experience. I've got to delete all this out before I publish it for students. Um, but I've been testing it out and Panopto, when I go in there, it will only show up the videos for that particular class. So students, by making Panopto video right there for me, I don't have to move it anymore. I can just do all of the demos that we've been, you can tell we've done a lot of demos of practicing before it launched. Um, and it's great. I love it too, because last year, like I would have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with someone and it automatically brought it over into Canvas from Zoom. That stuff all stays over in Zoom now. Only the class stuff, um, comes over in Zoom, which is great. Um, so it's so easy just to go in. So now I can go to any of my courses that I, I'm loving this. It's so fabulous. I can go in. I think I've done some recordings and I've been playing around in a lot of the different classes uh, doing these recordings to make sure everything works. Where is Panopto? There it is down here. And there's my recordings for the class session. Now, the important thing with Zoom that you're going to have to know, let me go back to Canvas 101 too. You will, you will need to know what your meeting ID number is, this right here. You can see by setting up a recurring meeting, you will have the same meeting ID. Now, I have three classes this fall. I will have three different meeting IDs for each class, which hope, probably, in about a month, I'll have them each probably memorized, but I'll need to know so that way it will go into the correct folder. Um, now, if it ends up you type in the wrong one, we can help you get the right uh, recording into the right folder. But this is what I need to touch on the touchpad and enter in in the room to be able to access um, as well. So I know we're over time, but I have, I have time for questions, um, and let me share with you quickly. I'm going to stop my screen so I can get to a website. Um, this is the, the website that I created back in the spring when we went remote. And like I said, it has 60 plus videos on these. Now it has honor lock. We're getting a new one, um, a new, uh, remote proctoring system, which all that stuff is still working its way through contracts. So we don't have any of the training stuff, but we will be providing training. You know, you know, you all who know me know, I want to make sure that you all feel supported um, in using these tools. Um, so this website will give you a lot of the resources um, that you'll, you'll be able to just, you know, click on it, save um, and be able to um, get to a lot of that stuff and just try it out. Now, um, one of my, you know, let me show you, let's see, desktop again. Uh, da, da, da. If you, if you have time, if you're staying around and you have time. Um, so one of my classes, you can see all courses. Last year, I actually like spent some time and did a homepage. 
Oh, I didn't show you. I got to do home page. Did a home page and my Lipscomb experience class last year. You can see that I created nice little banner and buttons that then when they click on it, it will take them like right to modules. You know, you don't have to start there. I, I mean, I did canvas for a couple of years before I got there because I'm like, I don't have time for any of that, but I had, you know, some, some information there. Um, the other thing, um, here was another class. I'll show you. I didn't do all that fancy welcome page because I didn't have time to do it. But um, you see, there we go. Here are my, it goes right into modules and it shows them. This was a, a very intensive weekend class for two weekends. So I, you know, we just had the resources there for them because we did a lot of in class and then they had the particular, um, this time I didn't put assignments in there and the assignments were over here. Those were just the resources. So the assignments were over. So, you know, you can structure it however you want. The one thing I forgot to show you is how to choose the home page. So you know what students are going into. So back to my Canvas 101 choosing home page. I don't want it to be the course modules. Let's say that I want it to be that nice syllabus page where it has some information. I can choose that. And now when I go into home, this is what pops up now. So that that's a really good option um, that you can have. You can also, if you are wanting to, if you have the time and you're wanting to create your own page, what I would do is go down here to pages and then create a new page. I call it home page. And then this is where you can add in like the little button. There's a website called da, D -A, da button factory um, and it will download the images. And what you do is literally um, you'll download the image. Let's see, I can, I can do one. No, actually, uh, upload file. Okay, my files, upload. I'll show you um, what you can do with that if you choose. Let's say that I, this course card right here, I, um, I'm just going to do this for now. Okay, I've uploaded my image in here. I can highlight that image and then it, let's say that that actually said modules on it. Then I would go over here and click where it says links, modules, um, and it will connect this, or no, no, sorry, not for that one, course navigation and it will go down here to modules. And now when students, so when I save and publish this, when students click on that, it'll take them right to modules. So if you wanted to do little, you know, things like that. So you can, you'll create that in a page. And this might be where you have your welcome. And um, there are lots of really good templates out there for that, you know. So now I've got this home page. So what I can do is now, da, 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 come on. Computer's like, no, not anything else. Okay, choose home page. I can choose pages front page. Oh, oh no. I, see, and what, what I love about Canvas, if you forget something, it will let you know. I didn't go down here. I didn't, I, I should select the three dots, the snowman, use as front page. There we go. Now I can go to home, choose home page. And I can change it to that. So now when I go into my home page, there we go. So you can have a nice little welcome. I like having a welcome page. Like I said, you don't have to, I didn't have one for like two years of using Canvas. And then last year I'm like, okay, um, I'm going to create a home page. So questions. This is a lot. You're going to get a recording. Start small, like, okay, I want to make sure my syllabus is in there and I want to work on uh, creating some modules and some assignments. And if that's where you start, that's a really good start right there um, for you. Is there a way if you have them doing like a presentation that you're going to grade, it's not really something that they turn in to incorporate that grade? Um, speak more to that, Jessica. Um, so like I'm teaching interior design, so it's a very visual course. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens, but hopefully 
they will be bringing something in that then they have to present to the class. So there might be a component of it that they can turn in digitally that could be graded, but then there's also going to be a, a verbal portion that has to be graded. Yeah. Yeah. So what you could do is you can go to an, an assignments and then let's just say that that was this particular assignment. What you could do is under here where you type in no submission. Okay. Or, um, yeah, or a quote on paper. So that way it's not um, in Canvas. And then you can, what you would do, let's just, we'll keep it there at no submission. That's typically what I do is like, you didn't have an actual submission in Canvas. Then I go to grade book to this particular assignment and I'll give everyone the grade at that point. Mm -hmm. And I can actually click on this and go to um, speed grader to get to everyone, you know, cause then I can provide some feedback in there as well. But I only have my test student in this one. <laughs> Great question. Um, that, so time limit um, for Canvas Studio. Um, somebody asked that the other day and um, they, I said, I don't know, I need to look into that. And somebody said, I've done it for up to 90 minutes. So um, I wouldn't recommend more than 90 minutes. My recommendation is about 20 minutes. Typically my recommendation is like five to seven minutes and chunking like small recordings because like even I've, I've been in a training institute this week and I had some videos to pre-watch before something and I'm like, how long are these? Like, and I saw like one was 20 and one was six. So I'm like, I'm going to do the six minute one. You know, even in my mind, I was like, oh my goodness, I, I just did what students do. Like when they look at stuff. Um, so I, I was thinking more for like assignments where they might have to demonstrate something mm -hmm. and they're, yeah. you know, videoing themselves doing it and uploading it. If there was, if there was a time limit. I don't think there is a time limit. Um, I've not seen that Panopto, like some people use Panopto. I, I use Canvas Studio just because it has been so easy for me to use. Um, and like Panoptos, I know there are some faculty members who love Panopto and they use that for their, and it's one of those things like, um, I use Google Slides, but I know some people use PowerPoint or some people use Prezi. Um, my preference is just Google Slides because it's all in my drive. So it's, 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 it'll be one of those things, I think, for Panopto as well, if you're, I mean, and just get in there and play. But for the link, I don't, as far as I know, there's not a time limit. Trying to move so I can see all your faces. <laughs> this is slightly unrelated, but you had a Campus Nexus faculty <laughs> icon. Is that something that we should have access to as well? I've been looking for that. Oh, well, I can um, send you the information on how and any of you all, if you don't have that, uh, send me. Actually, here's what I'll do in the chat. Let me go back to the dashboard. So this was something that IT and the registrar's office um, developed. Um, I actually helped them. All I did was help them put it into Canvas. Um, but it, there are a couple of videos that actually helped me. I'm going to get, there's a link down here where they, oh, yeah, here we go. This is a self-enrollment course. And so if you, um, click on this, it will ask you to self-enroll. And I've got a couple of other, like when I send out the recording of this, I've got a couple of other resources I'm going to share with y'all. For example, the uh, CTL May webinar recordings that we did. Um, we had a lot of topics on like designing and organizing um, online courses, engaging students, building community. We did two, most of them we did a morning and an afternoon session applying cognitive science, utilizing technology tools. So there's lots of resources here that I will send you the link on how to, cause I've got a little drafted uh, email for you all once the recording is ready. And then the other thing is in Canvas, if you go to courses and then all courses and then browse more courses, then um, 
we've got some additional Canvas 101 learning to teach that we have pulled from some other uh, colleges that, but they have some nice little tips in there for you as well. So lots of resources, but my favorite, of course, I, you know, shout out to the CTL, right? With, we go to Canvas and we've got all of these videos here for you. Short little video clips with recommendations. Um, and I, I created this mainly, I, I tried to think from the perspective of like, I don't even know how to spell Canvas and, and some things that I need to start with. Now our goal, once the semester start is to start like version two of the, okay, now I'm using Canvas. What are some cool things I can do with Canvas? Uh, but in March, we didn't have that much time to transition. So uh, I'm thankful we were able to, to get this done um, in time. So, yeah. But yes, there you go for the, the Campus Nexus. I did find out a little tip from IT that was really helpful for me because I logged in. All I know how to do is to log in um, and see my classes and my roster and where to put grades in. That's all I know how to do at this point. But it, um, I was trying to figure out where my class was actually gonna be for this fall and I couldn't see it. But if I just hover my mouse over it, it pops up. I was like, this was like the best gift like given to me was to figure out, cause I, I had no idea what class I was even in, teaching in this fall um, when I logged into Campus Nexus. So that was a, something new. I also think it hasn't been updated yet. I'll actually share this link with you all um, as well. But the class schedule thing, they have taken off the banner and now you can actually see the 2020 and you can see all the classes being offered and, and searched through, um, which is helpful. Because I was trying to help my child, he needs to drop and add a class as an incoming freshman because he signed up for an 8 a.m. class and that is not good for him. <laughs> so I needed to help him figure out which other math class he needed to take. So, but yeah, it'll go through. It doesn't, it'll, and it'll show you like how many se seats you have available. And there's the, the um, class room as well. So that's on there. So I don't know, I don't think they've sent out like a wide announcement about that yet, but that was really helpful for me to see this, um, this page as well. Other questions? My recommendation is to just to get in there, play a little bit. If you have, if you don't have a sandbox, um, I would email helpdesk at lipscomb.edu right now if you, if you have the chance or sometime today and that way they can get one created for you um, and play with. Um, I play with sandboxes all the time just to try it out and then I can import it. And like I said, um, you have questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, like the last two, because we've been in CTL, we've been in trainings a lot, um, which is why like my poor inbox, um, I'm hopefully gonna get through it this weekend, but um, I'm, we're not ignoring you, we're, we, we will respond. Um, and um, you can email ctllipscomb.edu and that comes to Julia and me both. And we're both able to kind of tag team and divide some of those out. You can email separately to one of us too. So anyway, um, I, unless anybody has any other questions. Okay. Well, um, great luck. Um, like I said, get in there. If you have additional questions, look at that uh, website first. And then if, if you can't find the answer there, we will gladly help you out with whatever you need to get. And don't forget to publish. And what color is good? Green. Green. Green is good. Yes. You all pass. Excellent. I'm going in there and give you all an A right now. So excellent. <laughs> so thank you all so much. Have a lovely weekend. And um, all right, let's go. Let's do this. So, thank you, Hope. Yes. Thank you all.